This player's career started in Czechoslovakia, playing from the age of 5 in his youth team, with his mom watching him from the sidelines and, though this situation might seem familiar to many of us, he wasn't living it in the same way. From a young age he was obsessed with perfecting his skills, making the most out of what he had to work with. Though he was not naturally ambidextrous, his training routine would make him as close to it as possible. At a certain point no human could tell what foot he preferred. But as he grew older, there was one problem that seemed to be forever standing in his way. The communist regime ruling over his homeland stopped any player under the age of 32 from leaving the country. There was no hope of ever joining one of the European giants. There was no hope for Pavel Nedved. As the years passed, he would be forced to move to Prague to take part in his mandatory military service, but it wouldn't be all bad. In 1989, the Berlin Wall would fall, and soon after, the communist regimes who ruled the Balkans collapsed, allowing Nedved to finally realize his dreams with open eyes. And then, to add further motivation, he would get a chance to play for the army's football team and there, his talent would be so evident that Sparta Prague would sign him after only 19 matches at the top level. It seemed this would be his shot, but at this point it was not yet observable that he had the potential to become a world-class player and soon enough, Karol Dobias, one of the players who had brought home the Euro 1976, would write in a newspaper that there was no future for Pavel Nedved. You see the trend, right? No matter how much he strived for his dreams, there was always a reason why someone or something had to try to show Nedved why they were impossible. I'm not one for motivational speeches, but if you watch these videos frequently, let them be tangible proof of why you shouldn't give up on your dreams. During his time at Sparta, Nedved was so intense with his training that he has told the press that his teammates would ask him why he trained so hard if he had everything in life. His answer? He said he trained for himself. At this point, Nedved had a chance to build a foundation to the career he desired and he didn't hesitate. Honestly, perhaps at first he wanted it too much. So much was his fierceness that early on he managed to get sent off three times across only six matches, but despite his growing pains, his time at Sparta showed clear signs of evolution. Over four seasons he would win three league titles and a domestic cup, slowly pumping his numbers up to a fourth season with 19 goals in 38 matches, numbers that would only reinforce the national team's intention to call him up for the Euro 1996, his first ever international tournament. Once there, the start wasn't the brightest, a 2-0 loss to Germany. The second match would be different, facing Italy and under 5 minutes Nedved would open the score sheet himself, only for Enrico Chiesa to equalize. Enrico Chiesa, who is the father of Federico Chiesa, who now plays at Juventus under the direction of Nedved himself. I found that interesting for some reason. Regardless, later on, another goal by the Czech Republic would get them three points and wide recognition for the talent of Nedved, who delivered an incredible performance. The final group stage match would be a messy three-goal draw against Russia, but still they would qualify to the next round, though Nedved would be out for that match due to an accumulation of yellow cards. Still, the Czech Republic would manage to stun Portugal and go through the semi-finals. Now facing France with Nedved back on the pitch, the match would be an absolute battle. 120 20 minutes and no goals would be seen. Nedved ran himself to the ground, being ever present on the pitch and still managed to gather the strength to convert his penalty which would lead to the Czech Republic's win over France. As they made it, by the 59th minute, miraculously through a penalty, they would be in front, but as the Germans equalized and forced them into extra time, Klinsmann would ruin their day as the Germans took their trophy. Though Nedved didn't get the trophy, he did get some acclaim around Europe, which would lead several clubs to try to sign him. At first it seemed he would be joining PSV, but after some last-minute talks with Lazio, he would cancel everything to join the club. Perhaps promises of an incredible rebuild over the following years were what made him so eager to join them, but who knows. His start was tough, his wife was pregnant and moving to a new country, especially considering that at the time the Czech Republic was not part of the European Union, was very tough. Lots of paperwork with Nedved claiming to have frequently asked himself 
what have I ended up? But regardless, he wouldn't allow that to affect his performances on the pitch. Instead, he would use the 90 minutes to free himself of the stress and through that he would manage to have a relatively successful season, finishing fourth in the league. But from then on, and as the rebuild kept progressing, so did the results and each season would be more successful than the last. In his second season, alongside the likes of Alessandro Nesta, Roberto Mancini and Vladimir Jogovic, they would manage to win the Coppa Italia and make it to the final of the UEFA Cup, getting defeated by Inter after an impressive win over Atletico de Madrid. Then, on the third season, the squad looked even more impressive, with players like Fernando Couto, Mijalovic, Stankovic, Christian Vieri, Marcelo Salas and Sergio Conceição. With all this talent, of course, they had to get something, and they did. Winning the last edition of the Cup Winners' Cup, though, it should be noted, they got an exceptionally easy draw, facing Lokomotiv Moscow in the semi-finals and Mallorca in the final. Though it should also be noted that that Mallorca squad was very impressive, even managing a third place finish in La Liga that year. Nedved was exceptional throughout the tournament, getting the winning goal in the final and four across it all. At this point, Nedved was known by most football fans as one of the most impressive new talents in Europe, but with a squad that was now proving capable of great things, Nedved was craving something more. He wanted to lead Lazio to a Serie A title during what was perhaps the peak of the league's competitiveness. If Nedved had already been privileged to get to play with so many great players at Lazio, at this point it was just incredible, as they would sign Diego Simeone, Inzaghi and Veron. After an incredible season, starting with a win over Manchester United in the European Super Cup, Lazio would get to their last match day of the league season, two points behind first place Juventus, who would face Perugia. There was no way they would lose, right? But they did and Lazio were champions of Italy, a legendary season for the club that only got better as they beat Inter in the final of the Coppa Italia to take home the double. At this point it was perhaps time to leave, as many others did. The intense spending by the Lazio board over the last few years was catching up with a club who still tried to pretend everything was okay, signing Hernan Crespo to make up for the departures, but it wouldn't be enough and that season would not bring them any trophies. At this point there was no way Nedved would stay at Lazio, as much as he had grown attached to the club and the fans to him, there was pressure from all sides for him to leave. Either be his agent, the infamous Mino Raiola, or the incessant attempts to sign him by Juventus, who, when you think about it, could easily justify their desperation. They had sold Zidane to Real Madrid, and how could you possibly replace him? Well. Despite, in the words of Mino Raiola, much fighting and yelling, and as Lazio fans took to the streets to protest the move, Nedved joined Juventus for 30 million pounds. His mission was simple in definition, though nearly impossible in execution. To replace Zinedine Zidane. Perhaps replace the greatest midfielder to ever grace this planet. The start of his life in Turin wasn't too easy, and like Zidane and Platini before him, he didn't have the excuse of being new to Italian football. In his case, it was the adaptation to Marcelo Lippi's more strict system that would take a toll on his performances. By the end of the season, he would have only scored four goals and he would be subject to headlines like all hair, no skill and strong speculations that he would leave Juve after only one season, despite winning the Serie A. These rumors would fuel Nedved's frustration over the summer and the only way he knew of blowing steam off? Working out and training, non-stop. If he was good before, once he came back, he was a monster. He would shine the brightest in the Champions League, where despite two defeats to Manchester United, he would score a second half equalizer against Deportivo, earning Juve one point that would be vital for their qualification. Once in the knockout stages, he would be essential as they faced Barcelona in the quarterfinals. After a one-goal draw in the first leg, it would be Nedved who would open the score sheet in the second as Juventus eventually got through with a goal on extra time. The semi-finals would follow a similar form factor, this time against Real Madrid. Juventus would lose 2-1 in the first leg, only to then get themselves level in the second leg and it would be Nedved who would get the winning goal to put them in the final. Unfortunately, he would also get a yellow card that would stop him from being present in it. Who knows, perhaps if it weren't for that card, it would be the deciding factor, stopping Juventus from losing to AC Milan on the penalty shootout. Regardless, that year wouldn't be a complete disappointment trophy-wise, as Juve would win the league once again. 
and individually for Nedved it would also be a great year, winning the most prestigious award of all, the Ballon d'Or, the second Czech to ever win it after Josef Mazopust. Nedved was now the best player in the world. The following two seasons would be far less eventful in the Champions League, but Nedved would take part in the Euro 2004. In a group stage match against the Netherlands, it was essential. As the team went down 2-0 after only 19 minutes, he would put on a man-of-the-match performance, leading them to come back 3-2. Once through to the knockout stage, a win over Denmark meant they only needed to defeat the Greeks in order to make it to the Euro final. But with Nedved coming out injured in the 40th minute, they would eventually get knocked out in extra time. Regardless at Juve, he would still win the Serie A another two times, though those trophies wouldn't last very long, soon after the Calciopoli scandal hit, and Juve would not only be stripped of those titles but be relegated to Serie B. Many players left, from Ibrahimovic to Cannavaro, Patrick Vieira and Turam, but Nedved would be one of the few who would stay, alongside Trezeguet, Del Piero and Buffon. They would get the club back to the first division and now, 34 years old, Nedved would start considering retirement, though he would repeatedly extend his career, staying for two more seasons at the club as they tried to get back in shape, and despite getting close in 2009 with a second place finish, Nedved would decide to end his career. His last ever match would be played against Lazio, his former team. Many would expect him to get booed, but no. The Lazio supporters stood and applauded because above all what mattered was the great moments he delivered and that we were witnessing the very last moment of an all-time great. Nedved was an incredibly tenacious, all-around playmaker. Despite being nearly ambidextrous, his preference for the left side of the pitch allowed him to whip crosses into the area effortlessly, but also to cut in and strike the net with massive power. From his free kicks to his speed, he seemed to be fantastic in every trait needed to play his role on the pitch. He was known in Italy as the Czech Fury, a name that he is definitely worthy of, considering his pace, power and stamina. The only thing anyone could maybe complain about regarding his game was his disciplinary record. He was often reckless and got way too many yellow cards, besides that, he was nearly flawless. Now getting into the ranking system. Finishing is interesting because he wasn't that prolific, but he was just so exceptional and so remarkable. Uh, when it comes to his long-range shots that I'd feel bad giving him any less. It's a 9 out of 10. Playmaking is just shy of the very best ever. It's a 9 out of 10. Dribbling? Dribbling was exceptional. He was very technical, even at high speeds. He gets another 9 out of 10. Speed and physicality was impressive. A great mix of both. An 8 out of 10. Mentality would be higher, but with the disciplinary problems, it's only an 8 out of 10. Flair is easily a 10 out of 10. So entertaining to watch, a blessing to the eyes. The trophy cabinet was disappointing, even more after he got some league titles stripped away, but no Champions League is just very disappointing, a 7 out of 10. Finally, the icon factor, and as much as he deserved far more praise, it tends to be forgotten, only a 6 out of 10. This totals out to 74 out of 90, same level as Rooney and Deku. Now of course you get the chance to vote for his X Factor and possibly change his ranking for the better or for the worse, depending on what you think of him. Vote in the description please, don't forget. I'd also like to show that I've added both the X Factors of Deku and Henrik Larsen to the list. Both of them got rated in the Elite category, leading Deku to total 80 points and Larsen 78. And yeah. That's it, I hope you enjoyed, this was Nedved's career in a video, great player, uh, and yeah, I... oh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time, bye.